Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this very exciting Mission Media tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at animation nodes. Enough people wanted to see more, and I know how to use a little bit more, so we'll go ahead and make some more tutorials on it. So what we're going to be doing today is having, quote, particles, unquote, come fly on from off screen and populate each vertice of this mesh. And then we're going to hide the mesh, and then we'll be able to render that out, and it's going to be very cool. So this is very similar to something that you can do with the Cinema 4D cloner object and a plane effector. But since Blender is free and Cinema 4D is not, we're going to do it in animation nodes. Whoop, whoop. Now, just a little warning. I have gotten some little, like, stuttery issues whenever you render animation out with this, so just watch out for that. Uh, it'll probably be fixed in some newer version of something. But for now, you know, it works pretty good, most if not all the time. So the first thing that we're going to do is create our particle. So we're going to do that by going to Mesh, and we're going to create a circle, and we're going to turn that circle into a triangle, turning these vertices to three. Then we're going to hit Shift H to add everything that's not our triangle, and go into Edit Mode. And since I forgot to add a face, we can hit F and add a face, and they're going to go and scale it down to S.25. We're going to rotate it around. Not that we really need to, but R X90 and R Z90. Now that's feeling pretty good. So tab back out of Edit Mode. Let me save this really quick, just in case. That is a bad name for this, but oh well. It's just a tutorial. All right, so now we've got that. We can start working on our thing. So hop into animation nodes just by tearing open a new window here and hitting Shift F3 to go into our node editor. And we've got our animation nodes node window open. And we'll call this cloner tut. Now the first thing that we're going to do is pop down a couple of object nodes. And these are super optional, but I just like doing it because it makes me feel good. And then it's really easy to change things out a bunch, especially if you're referencing one object multiple times, which I don't think we're going to do in this one, but it's just a good habit to get into. I think maybe not, you know, if you know better, let me know. But for here, we're going to populate one with the hand and one with our circle, which we should name particle. Particle. There we go. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to create the number of particles that we need. So we need to somehow make as many particles as there are vertices on this hand mesh. So what we do is we make instances by hitting Shift-A, going to Object, and selecting Instancer. And there we go. We'll just pop our particle into the object input. And you can see that you can just use this, and that's totally fine. But I like doing it this way, so deal with it. And now we have zero instances, and we could probably go through and count all the vertices on this and make as many as we want. But since we're using nodes, we don't have to do that. So what we're going to do is get the number of vertices from our hand object, and we do that by using an object mesh data node. So we hit Shift A, go to Mesh, Object Mesh Data, and we'll pipe this into our input here. And you can see we can turn on Use Modifiers. So when, when slash if we put a subsurf on this, it'll automatically update, which is great. Now you can see we have our vertex locations. And whenever you see these sort of semi-transparent um, sockets here, that means that it's giving you a list, which means it's more than one value. So you can see this is a list, and this is not a list. This is just an integer or float or whatever. So luckily, animation nodes is smart enough that whenever we try to pipe this in here, it'll automatically insert a get length node. So this will give you the number of vertices that are in this list. Pop it down to our instances. So now we have a bunch of instances of our um, particle there. So now the next thing that we need to do is transform all these particles to their respective vertices. And what we need to do gets a little bit scary. So, you know, just hang in there with me. But we need to use a loop to do an action for every single particle. So how we make a loop is go Shift A, Subprograms, Loop. And you can see this gets our loop input. But we don't have any way to pipe into this yet. So we need to go Shift A, Subprograms, Invoke Subprogram, My Loop, which we should name to... Um, or we'll call it cloner. Why not? See, so automatically updates there. And now we just get this iterations number, which is, you know, not a lot of help to us. So we need to add a new iterator. And we'll make this an object list, because you can see we have objects coming out of here that with a semi transparent thing, pipe into an object list. Whoop. And now all that does is take this socket and make it come out here one object at a time. So you see this is now not semi transparent anymore. And then the next thing that we need is we need our vertex locations. So we'll add another new iterator, and this will be a vector list. You can see it's blue. 
because our vertex is our vectors, which is um, basically an array of three values. I think math people slash programmer people correct me if I'm wrong, but pipe that in there and you can see now that turns that into a single value. So now what this will do is it will take the first object from the object list and pump it out here and the first vector from the vector list and pump it out here. And then it'll do the same thing for the second and the third and the fourth. And it'll iterate through all those because it's a loop. Or I guess it will loop through all those. Nice. So now we need to apply this vector to this object. So we'll hit Shift A and we'll do an object transforms output. So now you can see we've got a place for an object. And then we can turn on our vector here, which is our position vector. And pipe that in there. And now look at that. We've got something happening. See that it's not right just yet, but you know, something's definitely happening. So I'll hit T, go to animation nodes and see what's going on. And we'll turn off auto execute always because that can slow you down. Do tree change, frame change, property changed. All right, so now you can see that our, you know, things aren't really sticking very well. So now we're going to fix that by checking our use modifiers checkbox. You can see that sort of slowed us down a bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn down the subsurf that I think is on there. So yeah, in the view, we'll just do zero subdivisions and that'll speed up our workflow a little bit. Nice. Nice and quick. You see it sticks. Excellent. It's looking good. Now, if you want to, we can, you know, scale and move things around a little bit in edit mode. But if we want to make it a little bit more random, what we can do is do this inside the loop which is very exciting. So we'll turn on rotation and scale. We'll hit control A and type in random. And normally you'd think we'd use a random vector here, but actually the random number gives you a little bit more of an option because you get these minimum and maximum values. So we'll just type the minimum is, you know, 0.6 and the maximum is one. And now we can bring our index, which is the current iteration that we're on. So if we're looking at vector five, this number will be five or four probably because it probably starts at zero. But anyway, so we can feed this into the seed and that'll give us a different number for each iteration. And now we can pipe this number out by going to control A vector from value and putting this into scale. Now you can see you've get a little bit of variation there and you can make it more different or less different. So, you know, make this 0.5 and we'll just bring our overall scale down a little bit, like 0.8. Actually, we'll make it 0.25 and 0.8 and 0.5. That's fine. And now if we want to rotate stuff a little bit too, what we can do is get a shift A, E U L E R vector to Euler. And right now, I think this is in rate will be in radians. So we'll see how that looks. And we can, you know, always use some math. So yeah, we'll use some math and we will hit shift A. Actually, we'll hit shift D here. We'll get a new guy going, pump it into that. And then before that, we will multiply our value. And you can always just use, you know, a separate random number node, which is what I probably should do. But we've come this far. You know what? I will use a separate random number node. I was just going to put a multiply node in between the two, but it makes so much more sense to just do it this way. So now we'll make this zero to you know, 90 degrees. There you go. Now we get some randomness, maybe even a little bit less, like 45. And you could always, you know, split this out if you didn't want it to be rotating on a certain axis. But I think we spent enough time in this little section. It's time to move on to the exciting stuff. So now what we need to do is we need to get an output from our subprogram here. Because yeah, you can't just pipe out of here because that will keep looping on. And that's no good. So we'll go to our advanced node settings and go to our loop input. And now we can use object as output. And up there, we get a list again. So now this is all of our transformed objects. And now what we need to do is we need to do the thing with they animate on. So what we'll do is we will get all of our positions again. So we'll hit shift A object transforms input. So you can see this is the op the opposite of what we just had there. So we're going to take our object. And now we get the location, rotation and scale of all of them. And you can see that they're semi transparent again, which means that we get lists, which is good in this case. 
And now what we're going to do is hit Control-A and do Compose Matrix. And a matrix is basically just like you know how we talked about the location, the vertex locations was a vector of three values. Well, this is a matrix of several vectors, I guess. So I'll just put on screen sort of visual representation. But so you have the locations vector and the rotations Euler and the scale vector all inside this one matrix. So animation nodes can manipulate all those pieces of data together in one sort of package, which is nice. So there's that. And now we can just really easily copy our locations in there and rotation in there and scale in there. You can see it automatically makes it a list, which is super nice. So that's all looking good. And now this is, you know, one of the best nodes inside of animation nodes, which is go to matrix offset. What this does is it'll let us take our matrices and we can transform our location, scale, and rotation based on a fall off. So if we say make our scale 0, 0, and our fall off, no, oh, it won't update yet because we haven't output it. So we'll go ahead and make a quick little object matrix output, which is Shift A, I believe, under matrix. I know what it's called, so I can just search it, but you know, got to mix it up every once in a while. So matrix. So these are our matrices. So turn it into a list again. And then back from here, we get our objects. And there we go. So now you can see our fall off is working. So full scale, zero. And you can see right now is we are set to start, which is at one to be zero. But you can also make it backwards. So just like that, nice and easy. And you can, of course, do that with rotation. So they'll sort of twist as they come off, which is pretty nice. But now where it gets even better is controlling this fall off with what would be an effector inside of Cinema 4D. So we're going to hit Shift A. We're going to go to Fall Off, Object Controller. I'll pipe that in there. It'll change this to directional. And we'll hit Shift A, create a new empty. Plane axis will be fine. We'll call this um, effector, just because I won't give up my old naming conventions. And drop effector in there. And you can see if we move the effector, let me turn on always again so we can see. Move the effector. What? Look at that nonsense. But you can see things get a little bit slow, especially whenever you're recording 4K 60 frames per second at the same time as you're using this. So just for while we're working, I'm going to turn auto execute off, which will basically mean that it will only create a calculation or only do a calculation. Actually, turn auto execute on, turn always off. It'll only execute a computation, calculation, whatever, whenever something's changed in here or a frame is changed or a property is changed. So it's totally fine. So now we will go ahead and we can start off really quickly animating our effector. So to bring this down to the bottom. Let's go one, five. So I'll have it start there-ish. Execute node tree and you can see that's probably fine. Hit I for location. Then we'll skip forward. Bring up the dope sheet real quick. Dope sheet. Let me move this guy's back to frame zero. Click right there. Scroll forward. And we'll probably be done, you know, by here. So effector up there. I location. Execute. Nice. All of our triangles are there. Now you can see. And if we turn our hand off. Control click that. They appear on just like magic. Wow. And that's pretty cool what they're scaling on, but what if we have them appear on in the Y direction? So now they're gonna fly on. That's much cooler.
So now that is sort of the basics of how you get this thing happening. You can, of course, always do all sorts of other tricks to make it cooler, but this tutorial is already pretty long. And I think we did a good job of covering the basics of what's going on here. So other fun things I like to do is have the stuff come from a single point, which is very cool. And I think I covered that in another tutorial, but just to make sure I remember how to do it, I'll drop down the plane axis, let's put it off to the side and up. And then we'll just use another little object node and make this empty. Can we drop this right in there? Look at that. Drop it right in there. See right now that's not doing what we want, but if we change this to local axis, then that didn't do what I want, but it sure looks cool. Anyway, I feel like I'm about out of steam for this tutorial. I think we did pretty good stuff here. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. If you'd like to give it a like, if you didn't give it a dislike, no matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below. Be sure to check out Animation Node and Jacques, the guy who made it, has a Patreon. So, you know, go check that out. I'll put a link for that down in the description. Donate to him because this is, uh, this add-on is one of the reasons why I switched to Blender. So, you know, go go help him out, encourage him to make keep making cool stuff. Uh, also, check out mustermedia.com slash products where you can get a lot of, right now, not Blender-related things, but I might make some Blender things. Uh, but if you like LUTs, if you are a CG guy and you don't know much about color grading, you know, LUTs can help you out with getting those cool looks Evo has liked that you see on Instagram or Tumblr or Pinterest or wherever. Design Inspiration, always good if you don't know designspiration.com. Excellent. But anyway, I think I've rambled on long enough. Once again, I'm with Theo with Meester Media. Have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.